Well, hello, church. It is great to be with you. My name's Ethan, one of the ministers here. Hello to you who are down in the CLC, out in the parking lot, uh, listening in your cars and worshiping online. We are so glad to have people worshiping all over the place in all kinds of ways. It's a crazy time, but if you want to worship God, we're working hard to make it possible for you. We've got a protected service downstairs in the CLC. We've got the mask optional service here in the sanctuary. We've got drive-in service out in the parking lot, and we've got online services is still going on. So tell your friends, uh, there's no obstacle to them worshiping God. We got a way for you to worship God together. We're glad uh, for that. We're kicking off a new series today, but I tell you, I am still pumped about the series we just finished. If you missed it, it was a lot of fun. We went back and dug through our archives and the archives at Milligan University and found four sermons spanning a hundred years of preaching here at FCC. One of them was preached 100 and years and six months ago. Uh, just to celebrate the preaching. Uh, last week, uh, we finished it off strong with a sermon from Don Jeans that a lot of you will remember. He was the minister here back in the 90s. Uh, I think it's especially cool that that sermon was preached by two graduate students at Milligan University. And some of you who know Don's story, he left FCC to go be the president of what was then Milligan College, gave a lot of his life to strengthening and preparing that school for the impact it's having today. And so I love the fact that two students who are benefiting so directly from Don's ministry got to then preach a sermon that he preached in 97. So a lot of fun. If you missed that, go check it out online. Today we kick off a brand new series though. Uh, before I do that, I gotta tell you about a couple things coming up. You know, we're celebrating our 150th anniversary this year. I know we say it every week, uh, but we're excited about it. 150 years in ministry. A couple things to remind you of. The first, and this is such good news. I am so excited. I didn't understand this till very recently, but what I have discovered is that if you register for the 5K, you get a t-shirt, even if you don't finish the race. I didn't even know that. I assumed the t-shirt was somehow linked to completing the race in a timely manner. That's not true. All you have to do is register. But if you want to be guaranteed that we'll have a t-shirt in your size, you got to register by August 29th. So get your registrations in. Um, we'll have some extra t-shirts, but we're going to order them pretty soon. So register soon if you want to make sure we got a t-shirt waiting for you. I also, I hope you heard the good news. Uh, you know, we're trying to give away birthday gifts as part of our birthday celebration here. Uh, we're not trying to get them, but give them. Uh, the first three have been fully funded. We've started giving them away, um, and then we're working on the next three. So if that's something that just seems like fun to you to help us give some birthday presents, I forget, what are we working on now? It's... Uh um, oh, yeah, working on uh, training more young ministers at Milligan University through their ministry leadership program, uh, doing some maintenance on some core infrastructure here that's about 35 years old. Uh, that was last done in the 90s. We've got a few things that just, they just, they broke over 30 years. Time to fix them. And, um, and then the third thing, I forget, but it's in your bulletin or somewhere. You can find it, but it's not in my brain right now. But anyways, uh, we're going to keep doing that, and that is really, uh, it, it's, good, it's a good fun part of what we're doing. Also, I hope you notice the choir concert coming up on September 12th. And today, brand new series. And really, almost the whole series is contained in the title alone. Like if we could just dial into the title and really recognize the spiritual truth that lies beneath it, you'd almost have the whole series. The title is just real simple. It's just a phase, don't miss it. It's just a phase, don't miss it. The title is actually from a book on parenting that we actually keep down in our church library because we like it so much. So if you want a copy of it, parents, go grab it. Um, but, but the truth that it points to is bigger than just about parenting. It's a truth about life, that life, we're always encountering life in a phase. And when you're in the middle of a phase, it feels like it'll last forever, but it won't. So don't miss it. The, the spiritual goal of this series is really simple. The spiritual goal of this series is just this. And you could just start working on this right now. Like as soon as I say it, you could start working on it. You and God could start working on this right this minute. Consider the season of life that you're in right this minute. And just ask God, how do I use this season of life faithfully for you? Because it's not going to last. You, so eventually you'll be in a different season of life. And then you'll have to figure out how to use that season of life faithfully to God. But you can never go back and use this season of life. So just, just that's, that's the question of this series. What's the season of life that you're in? And how do you use it faithfully for God? 
I'm a big fan of the seasons. You know, I've never actually, I've lived a couple different places, but I've never lived anywhere that didn't have four distinct seasons. You know, some people talk about that. You know, we don't really get a summer around here. We don't really winter. I've always lived places that have all four. I was never very good at the thing, like when you're in elementary school and the teacher asks you, what's your favorite season? I mean, how could you pick a favorite season? Because summer has swimming in the creek, and the fall has campfires when the air gets chilly, and the, the winter has sledding, and the, the spring has flowers. I mean, how could you pick a favorite season? Of course, the summer also has the heat, and the fall has the leaves you have to rake, and, and the winter has a 35-degree rain. Is there anything worse than 35 degrees and rainy? And the spring, it's not 35 degrees anymore, but it's just more rain. Every plan you make gets ruined by a storm. So I don't know if I could have a least favorite season either. They've all got their problems. And the phases of life are like that. Oh, they may not come in a repeating cycle like the seasons of the year, but the phases of our life do come. And every one brings unique joys and every one brings unique sorrows. I, I got a preacher friend who, who talks about it like this. He says, a phase is a distinct time frame in a person's life that brings unique challenges and unique opportunities. A phase is a distinct time frame in a person's life that brings unique challenges and unique opportunities. It, it could be a phase of development, right? You know, it could be like babies or toddlers or, you know, middle schoolers or teenagers or young adults or middle age or retirement or old people or whatever, you, you know, whatever, you know, because that could be, that could be whatever, the phase you're in, you know. It could be the phase of a relationship, right? You know, we're, we're, we're just dating or it's the honeymoon phase or it's very much not the honeymoon phase. You know, that's a phase that sometimes happens to us in life. And, and like, we're like, is that just a phase? Because it's been a while, you know, and that happens, right? And, and you got to decide, like, what are you going to do? Like, I know we're kidding, but people, some people give up when it's the, not the honeymoon phase. And some people dig in and say, we can get through this. You know, we can, we can handle this, you know. Do you know your phase? Like, what phase are you in right now? Do you, 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 you know what name, the name of the phase you're in? Is it a phase of life? Is it, maybe it's a phase professionally you're in right now, you know. A new job, a new opportunity, or an old job, or a lost opportunity. What's the, what's the phase that you're in right now? Usually, when we talk about phases, we're sort of being dismissive, Right? We say, ah, it's just a phase. Don't worry about it. You know, a kid is acting out and getting in trouble. And, say, ah, it's just a phase. They'll get over it, you know. Or a, a young parent is exhausted because their kids somehow miraculously never need to sleep. They don't take naps and they cry all night. How that can happen, I don't know. But that's what they do. And you got a parent who's just exhausted. Oh, it's just a phase. You'll be fine. Just a phase, you know. You'll miss that when they sleep all morning. You can't get them out of bed as teenagers. And it's true, but it doesn't do that young mom or dad any good to tell them that. But it's, I mean, it's true, but, you know. Mostly when we talk about phases, that's what we're doing, right? It's just a phase. You can ignore it. It's just a phase. It's no big deal. And we say this. We say this about the kind of it's just a phase mentality uh, because, remember, a phase is a distinct time frame in a person's life that brings unique challenges. And when we're focused on those challenges, it probably is helpful to remember that the present phase you're in with its challenges won't last forever. That's an okay thing to remember. There is a glorious end to your story. So if you are in a difficult phase, if you are in a difficult season, yeah, it's good news to remember that that phase, that season won't last forever. Uh, this is the way the Bible puts it. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Some of you are in a phase of life right now, and you just need to be reminded that it's a season, and that God is with you, and that seasons change, okay? Some of you just need to be reminded, the phase you're in right now is not your whole life, and God is with you, and God will be with you 
until a new season comes. And the end, the, the final season of your life is a season of glory and a season of healing and a season of rescue and a season of rest and a season of comfort. Some of you do need to hear that word, that kind of, it, it's just a phase, so don't give up because God's not giving up on you. But there is something else the Bible says about the phases and seasons of our life. That if we focus too much uh, on the challenges, we could miss it. And, and it's this teaching that is the, the, the spiritual bedrock of this whole series. Because yes, every phase is a distinct time frame in a person's life that brings unique challenges. But it also brings unique opportunities. Right? That's the thing. That's the don't miss it. And here's what God's Word. Uh, we're going to spend a little time in Ephesians chapter 5. If you've got a Bible with you, uh, grab your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 5. If you've got a phone with you, if you just pull up a browser and type Ephesians, who, you don't even have to spell it right. Just type whatever your best guess of how to spell Ephesians is, and then 5. I bet if you search for it, you'll find it. We're going to spend a little time in Ephesians chapter 5. And right in the middle of Ephesians chapter 5, this is what God's Word says about the, 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 the opportunities of whatever phase you're in right now. Here's what it says. This is verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to the God of the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now this, this advice is in the middle of a long section about personal integrity, personal purity, relational integrity and relational purity. It starts in the beginning of chapter 5 and goes all the way through the middle of chapter 6 and right in the center. Here, I'll, I'll give you a, a couple samples of what, what Paul's, just to help you see what Paul's been talking about here. Look up in verse 1. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly beloved children, walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity or foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place but rather thank give, thanksgiving. So he's talking about a life of personal integrity and purity. Later on he says for once, this is verse 8, once you were in darkness but now you are light in the Lord so live as children of the light for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but bring them into the light. And in the middle of this long section about personal and relational purity, the pivot are these three verses. Look at them with me again. Be very careful, then, how you live. That's a, that's a pretty big intro, right? It's like he's trying to wake you up. Pay attention. Be very careful how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Make the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I love how Paul gives this one little command in, in the middle, and he bookends it with these two big warnings. He says, don't be unwise, be wise. That's the first book. And at the end, he says, don't be foolish, but understand the Lord's will. And in the middle, he gives this command. Make the most of every opportunity. You see, the fool says, it's just a phase Ignore it. It'll be over soon, like all the phases are. The wise says, there is an opportunity here. And I'm going to make the most of it. I'm not going to miss it. I'll tell you right up front. I know exactly what it looks like to ignore this advice. 
I know what it looks like to ignore this command of God's word, the make the most of every opportunity command. I tell my kids all the time, whenever they have an opportunity to do something awesome, and they're trying to decide whether to go do it or sit at home, and I'm saying, go, go do it, go experience it. I tell them all the time of the, of the opportunity I had in college to go to a free Dave Matthews concert. And this was back in the 90s when Dave Matthews was huge. Some of you remember that when Dave Matthews was huge, right? Ants marching had just came out. Everybody was learning how to play the harmonica because they all wanted to be Dave Matthews, right? You know, and I got the opportunity to go to a free concert. And I'll just tell you the truth. I do not remember what exam I studied for instead. I have no memory of what test I was studying for. But I definitely remember not going to that concert, right? Or when my kids, I remember when my kids were in their pillow fort phase, Every night, Dad, can we tear apart the living room and build a pillow fort? Dad, can we tear apart the living room? Every single night after night. And I tell you, I said yes. I maybe even said yes a lot. I don't remember. But I know this. I'd give almost anything to be able to go back and say yes just, just 10 more times. Just to build 10 more pillow forts with my kids. Because again, I don't remember what I was doing instead, but I don't think it was as important as building pillow forts. I really don't. I know on that day it felt super important, but I'm not sure it was. I think I might have missed an opportunity, and I wish I somehow could have heard God's voice somehow pounding in my soul. Ethan, make the most of every opportunity. This is just a phase. They will eventually stop asking you to build pillow forts. How about you? Anybody else got a testimony like that? Anybody else got an opportunity you missed? Maybe it was a, a one-time deal, like a free Dave Matthews concert, and you wish you'd gone. Or maybe it was a whole season of opportunity, and maybe you didn't miss it completely, but you sure missed it more than you wish you had. And man, if you could just go back, if you got that opportunity one more time, you would never miss it now because you know what it cost, Right? See, see, the thing about a phase is the challenges of a phase don't last, but neither do the opportunities. The phase of life you're, right in, you're in right now has opportunities that you will never get again. And the phases of life you've gone through have had opportunities they had that you, you could never get back. And, and for some of us, this is our biggest regret in life. Our biggest regrets in life are when we look back at the phases of our lives and we, we recognize now that all we could see were the challenges and we were blind to the opportunities. Now listen, I don't want you to wallow in regret today, okay? I don't want everybody to, with me, burst into tears. You didn't build enough pillow forts when your kids were little, you know. I, that's not what I want. I don't want you to wallow in regret today. But, but I, do, I do want you to experience just enough regret. Experience just enough regret for the phases, the opportunities that you missed in the past that will wake you up that maybe you have opportunities in the present moment that you don't want to miss today. That's the only good your regret might serve is if it awakened you to the phase you're in right now. There are opportunities God wants you to seize right this minute. I was a college minister for a long season, and I know so many college students who would talk about the things they wanted to do for God in the future tense. Yeah, I'm in college now. Yeah, I'm just going to get through, get my degree. But one day, the stuff I'll do for God. And then I talk to them 10 years later, and all they can talk about are all their blown opportunities. The stuff they could have done in college, the, the impact they could have made for Jesus when, back then. And they just realize now that they've got new opportunities, sure, but they'll never get those back. Don't miss it. That's, that's what Paul says. Make the most of every opportunity. And before you get stuck wallowing in regret, the good news is you probably have some sense of what it feels to obey this command of God's word, don't you? I mean, maybe like me, you've got lots of stories of missed opportunities, but maybe you've just got a couple. You've got a couple stories where you saw the opportunity and you took it, and you can, you can testify in your own experience that God's word is true. Make the most of every opportunity. That's what wise people do. 
The fools say it's just a phase, ignore it. But wise people say there's an opportunity here, and I'm going to make the most of it. I, I don't have a lot of these happy stories. I got one, though. Uh, about 20 years ago, I was, I was on a plane, and I had just been studying a, a, a text in the Bible that, that, preaches a, that teaches a similar principle. I'd been studying 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul gives this charge to Timothy. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. This is, you know, big stuff here, right? Here's the charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season. If you're in a good phase for preaching, be ready to preach. And out of season. If it's a bad phase for preaching, preach anyway. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. This is just, this is just the preacher's version of make the most of every opportunity. No matter the season, Paul says. And so I've been, I've been studying this text, and so as I boarded the plane, I, I prayed a prayer that I don't normally pray. Normally when I get on a plane, the only prayer I'm praying, praying is, God, please don't let me die in a fiery grave. Like that's my main airplane prayer. But that day, in addition to that prayer, I prayed a bonus prayer. I just prayed, God, if you gave me an opportunity, I, I, would, I would try to share my faith. Like if you did it, if you opened the door wide enough, I would be faithful and do what that verse says. I, it, I'm just, I'll take, I will make the most of any opportunity you give me. And so I was on one of those little puddle jumpers from Charlotte back to Tri-Cities. It was the last one. You know, it leaves Charlotte like 1130 or something. Some of y'all have been on that same plane. And, you know, it seats 20 people. And there were eight of us on the plane all spread out. And I'm sitting across the aisle from this guy. And I don't know, I'm near 30. He's near 20. And we get talking a little bit. He was from out of town visiting Johnson City for the first time. We got talking a little bit. And eventually he asked me uh, what I do for a living. Now, pastors hate this question because as soon as people ask us and we tell them we're pastors, that ends whatever conversation we were going to have. They were about to talk about movies or whatever, but now they can't because we're a preacher or whatever. So you, it's a disaster. But anyways, I said, well, I work for a church. And, and, uh, and, and normally that's the end of the conversation. But, but he did something interesting. He looked at me and just kind of real, real curious and said, Really? Why? And again, I knew all my answers. My brain cycled through all the answers. He said, well, you know, you get out of prison, what are you going to do? Or you're fired from McDonald's, you got to go work somewhere, you know? I had all my answers, you know, uh, of what I was going to say. I knew, I knew the answer, but instead, because I'd prayed that prayer, I was going to make the most of opportunity, I actually, I actually told him the truth. I, I told him why. I said, I said this, uh, or, or something more or less, I said this. I said, well... I think that the historical evidence for Jesus' resurrection is really quite strong. And given that evidence, I think it's easier to believe that Jesus did rise from the dead than to believe that he didn't rise from the dead. And if Jesus rose from the dead, then he's the Son of God, and the Bible is reliable and true, and God can be trusted, and we all can be saved. And if all of that is true, it's the most important news in the entire world. And so I became a pastor. And that really is why I became a pastor, is I became convinced Jesus rose from the dead and everything else kind of trickled out from there. And he said to me, he says, what do you mean evidence? I thought you just believed it because your parents told you to believe it. And 45 minutes later, we landed in Tri-Cities and I told him as much as I could about the historical evidence for the resurrection and counter theories and why those counter theories didn't make sense to me and who studied this and other authors he could read and uh, and we exchanged email addresses, and we exchanged emails, I don't know, four or six months. He, he, he went back home. He found a church that he visited, and we eventually lost contact. Uh, he had an AOL email address that eventually just stopped working, and you know, we, I, I don't even know how to track him down today. I don't know how that story ended. Uh, I can't tell you about his baptism or something. You know, I, didn't get, he's not, I don't, can't tell you he's a preacher today. I don't know how that story ended. But I will tell you, I have zero regrets about that plane flight. I got lots of regrets about other opportunities I missed. But on that one, I got zero regrets. And that is the challenge of this series. Make the most of the opportunities you have in the phase you're in. A phase is a distinct time frame in a person's life that brings with it unique challenges and unique opportunities. And while others may say, it's just a phase, they'll get over it, or it's just a phase, wait it out, or it's just a phase, you'll get through it, we are going to follow Paul's counsel. 
we're going to say it's just a phase. It won't last long. And while it's here, we will make the most of every opportunity. This whole COVID thing, mask wearing and all this. I mean, Lord willing, please tell me it's just a phase, right? Like this can't last forever. We can't still be talking about COVID when I got grandkids, right? Okay. So let's make the most of every opportunity. Yes, it has unique challenges, but it also has unique opportunities to show grace and forgive people and be flexible and not pretend like you're an epidemiologist. I don't think anybody in this room is an epidemiologist, so none of us really know. We're all doing our best. Cut each other some slack, right? What an opportunity this is. And over the next several weeks, we're just going to unpack and apply this simple challenge to lots of the areas of our life. What's the opportunity you have before you that God doesn't want you to miss? And and, and really, I just want you to keep asking. And don't ask me. Don't ask your friends. Just ask God this, this simple question. What's the season I'm in? And what are the opportunities that I'm having trouble seeing? And how could I make the most of those opportunities? Paul says, don't live like the unwise. Live like the wise. Don't be a fool. Ask what the Lord's will is. And in the middle, he tells you, make the most of every opportunity. You want to say to Paul, Paul, you don't understand. The days are evil. I'm just trying to get through. I'm just trying to wait it out. And Paul's like, yeah, I know the days are evil. The days days I lived in were evil too. And God will get you through. I mean, yes, that part of the the, the thing is true. The the phase won't last forever, and God will bring you through to glory. But while it does, right? We're, We're asking God this. How can we declare with our very lives, I am no fool. I will make the most of every opportunity God gives me. Every opportunity this phase of life provides. Now, before we jump into this over the next several weeks, I do want to acknowledge one thing right up front. I am fully aware that just even saying this aloud is exhausting, right? I'm already exhausted. Make the most of every opportunity. That's the call of God on our lives. Couldn't it be make the most of every other opportunity or one out of five ain't bad or something like that? Like, this just seems ridiculous. And so what I want to do today, just real quickly in the time I got left, is I want to lay some groundwork that will hopefully give you the courage to face the call of God on your life, okay? Because I know, just saying out loud, I've said the phrase, make the most of every opportunity, like 10 times in this sermon. Every time I die a little inside because it's so exhausting to even say that sentence. So I want to give you some groundwork that might give you the confidence to actually approach the call of God in your life. And the the two things I need you to know, just two things, and and, and Paul goes on, and we're we're going to stay in Ephesians right now because there are two things Paul wants you to know that will make it possible for you to face this challenge. The first thing Paul wants you to know is you're not supposed to do it alone. To to live a life that decides to make the most of every opportunity, to not miss the phase you're in, is so hard to do alone. You will get weary fast, and you will give up. You are not meant to do it alone. They mentioned earlier, today is Connect Sunday. We do Connect Sunday twice a year. Connect Sunday is a really simple Sunday. The logic of Connect Sunday goes like this. If you're already in a group, super. If you're not in a group, get in a group. It's that complicated. You got it? If you're already in a group, super. If you're not in a group, get in a group. Maybe you want to get in a group with people that are in your same phase, right? Like that's a great way to help take advantage to make sure you don't miss the phase you're in. Maybe you want to group up with some parents or group up with some, some, some husbands that are trying to make their marriages succeed or group up with people that are kind of in that with you. Here, I'm going to make it super easy. If you got, if you got technology, uh, like if you got a smartphone, I, I, they tell me this is true, and people did it last hour, and that was the 815 service. So if they could do it, y'all can definitely do it, okay? Um, so if you hold your, the camera on your phone up to that little symbol right there, it'll automatically take you to a link uh, that just has a little form, and you can just fill out that form, and it'll help you. It, it'll give us the information, and we can get you in a group. So you can, you can do that. Uh, also, maybe on your way in, you picked up this thing. It's got there. If this whole phone thing isn't your speed... This is what I would do, because that phone thing terrifies me. Um, we got on, on, the, uh, on the connection card. You'll see on the front, you can fill out your name and stuff. 
And on the back, it just says, Connect Sunday. Are you in a group? Which group? So if you're in a group, just tell us. We want to know so we can be praying for you and celebrating the fact. That helps us to know that you're connected. And if you're not in a group, it says, want more info about groups. Just check the box that says yes. If you check yes right there and you fill out this side, you'll get a phone call from somebody and they'll talk to you about how you can get connected in groups. If you're looking for an easy way to do that, if that's too much for you, you don't want anybody to call you, you want to kind of do this on your own terms, September 8th, Wednesday, September 8th at 630 We've got a whole bunch of groups that that we meet right here together. We do a short Bible study together, and then we split up into breakout groups. And the breakouts are sort of by phase. we got men's groups and women's groups and parents' groups and senior adult groups and young adult groups. And so we kind of break out into breakout groups. Um, Our study this fall is going to be on what we call the prison epistles. It's four of Paul's letters, uh, including Ephesians. So if you want to know more about Ephesians 5, you can come learn for that. I'm teaching it with my dad, so it's going to be a lot of fun. My dad was a professor, uh, Bible professor at Milligan for a long, long time. Uh, He's here down in the CLC. He was there a long, long time. Like he taught there forever. He's great. Just teasing dad. All right, anyways, uh, but my dad and I are teaching it together, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. That starts September 8th, so you can come learn, and then you can get just get put in a group. If you want to know how to start a group, we got a thing coming up uh, this Saturday, 9 a.m. Uh, just show up. It'll be five, five strategies for launching a great group. I and the group's team will be there. Um, so just show up here at 9 a.m. If you want ideas about how to start a group, we'll get you uh, connected on that. Because that's it. I mean, if you're going to do something as challenging as making the most of every opportunity, you're going to need a team with you. You're going to need some people alongside you who said, we're in. It's just a phase. We're not going to miss it. We're not going to miss, you know, the season we're in and the opportunities it grants us. Here's the second bit of good news that you've got to know. If you're going to, if you're going to embrace a, a biblical challenge of this magnitude, you've got to know this, okay? It, it's the way Paul ends this section of text. Remember I told you it was this long section about personal purity and about relational purity and integrity? Here's how he ends it. He ends it with this reminder. That what God calls you to do today, you do by God's power and not yours. Here's how he puts it. Finally, be strong in the Lord. Not strong in yourself, not strong in your strength, not muster up your willpower, but God's strength. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, you put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, he already talked about the day of evil, right? He said, make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And you're like, how am I supposed to do that? And he's like, well, by God's power, not by your power. By God's strength, not by your strength. By God's will, not by your will. By God's armor, not by your armor. By God's word, not by your word. When the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, you'll stand. See, that is good news, church. God wants to give you the power to accomplish God's calling in your life. So I know. Whatever you're going through now, whatever you got going on in your life, it's just a phase. Wait long enough, something different will be going on in your life. I know, it's, it, it's just a phase. But the phase that you're waiting to be over, God says is an opportunity that God wants to do, to do unique work in your life right now that, that can't be done any other time. And some of you right now, you are waiting for a better season. You're waiting for a better season. And I got, I, got, I got two pieces of good news. The first piece of good news is God promises that a better season will come. Whatever season you're in now, there will one day be a season of rest and healing and restoration and peace. That season is coming. But in the meantime, God says there are opportunities in this season I don't want you to miss. So I know it's a big challenge. You come back every week for the next few weeks. We're going to talk about how this challenge is expressed in various areas of our life. But right now, I just want you to not be afraid 
to say yes to the call of God on your life, to not miss the opportunities God has before you in this present moment. Get a team. Get tapped into the power of God. And then just trust that in every phase of your life, God's strength is sufficient for the challenges you face. And God's calling is clear for the opportunities God gives you. Let me pray for you. God, would you just bless us, empower us. Man, we are in so many different phases right now. We are all over the map, and yet we share this in common. We are dependent on your strength dependent on your grace, dependent on your power, trusting in your mercy and love, needing your hope for our salvation, and believing your promise that in the phase of life you have prepared for us opportunities of service and work and goodness and blessing. And I just ask that you would empower your servants right now to step in and receive those opportunities. I just pray, Lord Christ, that you would would give us in this present moment, the courage to say, we know it's just a phase. And by your grace, God, we won't miss it. This is our prayer and our plea. Accomplish this by your power, Lord Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.